I am Tarot Oracle, and this is my complete tarot course. I haven't really seen anything like this on uh, YouTube, so I wanted to make a complete tarot course. Complete tarot course means that you can come into this from not knowing anything at all to being a, I mean, an exceptional reader if you put the time in. What I'm going to do is teach you how to read the cards using no memorization, so there's nothing to memorize. There's no books to read. There's nothing like that. In addition, I'm going to let your intuition kick it up, but this is not an intuitive course. The problem with an intuitive course by itself, in my opinion, is you have the uh-um reading. And that's when your intuition just hasn't kicked in. Your intuition is not strong that day. You're just kind of out of it, but you have to read anyway or whatever. And your intuition fills the whole reading with uh, um. So you'll, so you'll lay down like four or five cards. And you'll see the guy, he'll just be sitting there just with a lost look in his eye, just like, um, uh, um, and there's a lot of problems with this. The main problem is you're not connecting with your querent or the person that's asking you this question. So they have somebody staring at you and you're not looking back at them. You're not making eye contact. You're not asking them follow-up questions. All you're doing is struggling the hell out of trying to figure out what these cards mean. So I'm going to eliminate that problem. Instead of, uh, um, you will instantly be able to read. I don't care if your intuition is gone, warmed up. Even if you have no intuition, you'll still be able to read tarot because this method works that way. If you want to use your intuition, you will, uh, can use your intuition after you start talking. But basically, this is a, an, a, a, your ability to immediately start talking and start talking meaningful things related to their question and have enough confidence to where you can look at the person and make eye contact and a ask follow-up questions and uh, just go with it. So it's not an intuitive method. It's an intuitive helper. It's a way to get you into intuitive reading rapidly, quickly, and with no effort whatsoever. I mean, there's literally like nothing to memorize in this whole thing. And in addition, it's a lot of fun. So the, the second uh, way I've seen of learn tarot is just books. And I mean, you have like just uh, book after book after book and after book. And then you'll have spreads. So, uh, I mean, this is a big book. This is your tarot wisdom, your standard. Uh, what do I need to have to start tarot? I mean, this is huge. This is 500 pages. In addition, it talks about uh, Kabbalah, and it talks about astrology associations, which are cool. But, I mean, if you like brand new, Jesus Christ, it's just a lot of memorization. And then you have spreads. So, in addition to memorizing that 500-page book worth of stuff, now you need to memorize spreads. Not just one spread, but spreads for different occasions. And then, so you're wandering around with all these books, you look like a college student. I mean, it's just not... And then, of course, Tarot and Astrology, which is an excellent book. But, uh, again, if you're new, this is just really intimidating. So, um, again, there's nothing to memorize in this course. And there's uh, not anything substantial that you need to know other than just having fun. So you'll learn by having fun. So I got my idea from doing this stuff by Crowley's Book of Thought. And he talks about the cards of the tarot as living beings, so this section right here. In addition, his book 777, he talks about something similar. And in the uh, complete uh, Golden Dawn thing, they talk about uh, cards having attitudes or something like that. So I was like, you know, this is a recurring theme. Maybe the cards are alive or, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. So what I want to do is pull some meaning out of the cards and uh, have something kind of cool and interesting and a way to connect with the cards. Let them talk to me instead of me pulling data out. A lot of times in a reading, someone who's brand new or someone who's not well practiced or someone who's just out of it that day will constantly be trying to extract meaning out of the cards by forcefully pulling and extracting meaning out of the cards. My method allows the cards to talk to you and to tell you what they want to say. Therefore, you don't have to pull anything, extract anything, and, and exert any effort whatsoever. So that's what you have looked forward to. This is going to be an exciting course. I'm not sure how long it's going to be. I haven't filmed it yet. Obviously, this is the intro. So I'm going to say, I don't know, like 10, 15 hours. Uh, it's going to be a complete tarot course, so you will need to follow along. Now, in order to follow along with this course, you need some cards. You'll need some cards with dudes doing things, basically. Uh, dudes doing things can include kitties, 
uh, as long as you have characters in the cars, you'll need illustrated miners. Now, once you get good at this method, you can use like the Thoth Tarot uh, or something like that. But just for the beginner, just for starting, let's get some picture cards. So, uh, Dreaming Way, Modern Medieval, Crystal Visions, Golden Rider. Let's see, uh, Spiral Tarot, even little Angel Tarot cards. So many good cards. We're going to use, um, pretty much for the whole course, the Golden Rider. Golden Rider is just standard Rider weight, but it has a golden edge, and I really like this. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video and grab yourself some cards with uh, pictures. Dudes doing things, uh, women doing things, a lot of people doing a lot of things in all the cards. You need illustrated minders, so go grab your deck that qualifies and come back. And I will be here and we'll get started. So now that you have your deck, what I want you to do is just pull, go ahead and give it a good shuffle and such. Pause the movie if you're, pause the movie, pause uh, me if you need, and grab one car and turn it over. We, we, we will not be using reversals through this entire thing. In addition, um, I'm going to have mainly only one question that is going to be asked of you through this entire thing uh, for tarot readings. And that is, some girl comes up to you and she asks you, my boyfriend and I just broke up, will we get back together? So that's the only question, pretty much, that you're going to have throughout this entire course. So every time you try to do a tarot reading, you think, my boyfriend and I broke up, will we get back together? So some girl asking you this, because that is my, by far my number one question. So let's pull one card, pull one with me, put it down in front of you while you're watching, and describe this to me. Now, I want you to start thinking of tarot cards as movies. I don't want you to use your intuition. I don't care what your intuition is saying. Don't bother with it. I want you to tell me what you see in the card as a movie scene. So this perhaps is one scene out of a movie. Now pretend that you walked into a theater, you're meeting your friend. You got confused, you went in the wrong theater, and there's a different movie playing, and you only got to see one scene of it before you're like, you know, this is, uh, this is not my movie, I need to leave. So, here's your one scene of a movie. So, mine says the tower. Again, we're not memorizing cards, we're looking at cards, we're not using intuition. So, what is this, basically, this is a movie scene, okay? Number one question to ask yourself, what type of scene is this? Is this a movie scene, a romantic movie scene, where lovers are getting together or having sex or whatever? No, not pretty much. Uh, is this like a calm scene, like at the end of the movie or the start of the movie, where everything is going day-to-day -day life, is just kind of moving along? No, not really. So is this an action scene, like a very bad action scene maybe? Yes, definitely an action scene. So we've answered the first question that we have on this the movie reading. Okay, I'm going to call this movie spreads. This is the first thing that we have for a movie. We have an action scene. That's basically it. So, what's happening in this scene? So, imagine that you went to your friend in the other movie, and at the end of it, I was like, dude, I walked in this wrong theater. I saw one scene. How would you describe it to him? See, there's no need to use your intuition. There's no need to do anything. All you saw is something happen on a movie, and you're describing it to somebody. Pretty simple. I mean, there's no need to uh, blurt, and there's no need to f use a sentence and go, you know, I'm going to lay down a card, and I'm going to say, today I blew up a tower. You, know, you don't have to do all that. So it's just a movie scene. What is the scene here? The scene's obviously a tower exploding, a bunch of people falling out. This is a pretty good action scene. If I walked in and saw this, I may stay a little longer and meet my friend later and just eat the popcorn while I'm sitting there, right? So this is a good action scene. So look at this at your card and tell me what your card is. Is it a romantic scene? Is it kind of the start of the movie where everything's going on day-to-day -day life and it's kind of boring? Or is it an action scene? Or is it a, like a sad love uh, triangle and everybody's crying? Or is it conflict where people are fighting? Or what kind of scene is it? This is obviously a disaster scene, like something you see out of a... You know, it's just something blowing up and boom and, you know, it's kind of die hard three. I don't know, kind of bad thing. So uh, you tell me what you see on your card. And now you have described your movie scene. Pause the video if you need. Now go ahead and get this card, turn it over, and kind of put it off to the side. Now what I want you to do is grab another card, and we're basically going to do the same thing. We're going to do this for about three or four cards. 
So now I have something called the moon. And the moon is, there's a big moon up here. There's some dogs howling at it or something like that. I'm going to say this is like an end, like the end of the movie where, uh, oh, check it out, there's a crab. There you go. There's a crab coming up. He's about to get this long journey, it looks like. And a bunch of people howling at the moon. Looks like maybe all three of these dudes are going to do the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to say this is like the beginning of the Wizard of Oz where they're about to make the journey. So this is my movie scene. Tell me about your movie scene. A love scene? Uh, is it kind of like mine where the Wizard of Oz and they're about to go, three dudes are here about to go on this journey? Or what's happening on yours? So let me know. And then, after you've done that, we'll pull one more card. We're going to do movie scenes with one card one more time. Okay, so now I have a court card. If you encounter a court card, the problem with all court cards is, I call it the dude sitting on a throne syndrome. Basically, you have a dude or a woman, they're sitting on a throne. And if I'm asked to describe this, I'm not really going to remember it because there's nothing going on. So when you encounter this, a court card, that would be a knight, page, queen, or king, and they're not doing anything. On Okay, keep in mind some decks, they are doing something. But this deck, they aren't. If they aren't doing anything, I want you to grab another card and lay it at a 45 degree angle. Not like this. Not like this, but like this. Lay that at a 45 degree angle. Now, instead of a chick on a throne syndrome, dude on a throne syndrome doing nothing, imagine this person doing this. So now we have the Queen of Wands. So it looks like a, uh, how would you describe this character in the movie? I would describe her as, I mean, fairly powerful. She has like a, a good vibe going and she looks pretty happy and she's got a flower so I think she's pretty peaceful she doesn't look like she's just gonna go off and start wailing somebody with a stick right especially with a stick has uh, you know pieces of little leaves growing out of it so it looks like a fairly peaceful character a uh, pretty happy character. It looks like that she's uh, fairly serene in her surroundings, and she has a, a kitty, so she's pretty, pretty, seems like pretty calm, quaint, but has her own thing going. Now, she, this character I just described, is now tied up and kind of looking like she's in jail a little bit. So, this is what we have for a movie scene. We have this lady, calm, peaceful, serene, you know, kind of cruising. Um, pretty happy. She's got a whole thing going on with the flower, but now she's having problems. I mean, obviously, if you're tied up and um, you can't see nothing and you have a bunch of sharp objects around you and you're like sitting in this water, not going to be good. So we have this pretty calm, serene person, um, you know, kind of in trouble. It looks like somebody else got her in trouble. So maybe she did something to deserve it. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. But I will tell you that she is definitely in trouble. That just does not look good at all. In addition, it's a pretty dark card. Now, we're going to start using the... We're going to start using a method I call squinting to get your movie summary. So, if you were to squint, and just basically squinting is to almost close your eyes all the way, but leave just a little light coming in. If you were to squint... How would you describe this movie scene by not really seeing all the details? So, I'm squinting now, and I'm going to say it doesn't look good. So, that's my summary. Doesn't look promising, basically. So, tell me about yours. You have one card, or maybe a court card with another added on. And tell me how it looks. I mean, how would you describe this movie scene? If I were to go and talk to my friend in the next theater and tell him about a movie scene I just saw... How would you describe it? I personally would describe it, dude, there was this woman. She seemed pretty cool, but uh, she got herself into trouble. And this is just me. She got herself into trouble. Uh, nobody just ties up random people. I mean, maybe she kidnapped or something like that. But uh, she's in some bad news. Probably needs some rescuing, actually. So uh, can't see anything and all tied up. So that is my summary for my movie scene. Tell me about yours. Let me know what you see on your movie scene. And then once you tell me that, we'll move on to part two, which is a little more cards, or a few more cards, and a few more ideas to go along with those. So now, just for fun, I'm going to describe When Harry Met Sally. Everybody's seen When Harry Met Sally, I assume. If you haven't, 
you'll see it. Anyway, uh, I'm going to describe When Harry Met Sally with tarot cards. So kind of a, a movie theme here. All right, well, we have these people, and they met while they were working kind of thing. They're both going to different jobs and going to different cities, and they met while they were working. And there was some instant chemistry there. They definitely had some chemistry. However, they were constantly like, fighting and bickering and disagreeing about everything, and they thought they'd never meet again. But they did end up traveling together for quite some time, and they went to New York. And once they got there, they were both alone. And so uh, they ended up having mutual friends and other dates and other people and stuff like that. But in the end, they were either heartbroken or something went horribly wrong, but they just couldn't sleep type of thing. And sometimes they were just depressed or they just didn't want to meet any more other people. And it was kind of weighing on their mind. And eventually, they decided the heartbreak wasn't, he decided the heartbreak was a little too much. Uh, he loved her and he wanted to go to her. And so he charged in and decided that he told her he loved her and they lived happily ever after, after a lot more scenes. This is a really rough summary. But you can see that's basically when Harry met Sally in tarot cards. So just kind of get you an idea that you can indeed see a lot of different things and a bunch of movie stuff inside the cards. So now let's turn When Harry Met Sally into an actual reading. So this reading is going to kind of suck because it's designed for a beginner. So if you've been reading tarot for 30 years and you're watching this video and you think I'm a freaking idiot, then please, why are you watching the beginning section? I will clearly mark the intermediate and advanced sections for you. So let's go to a beginner reading. Beginner reading. This is When Harry Met Sally, the first four scenes, right? First off, we got work. So what was our question again? Would anybody like to tell me? The question was, this girl asked you, my boy will. Me and my boyfriend broke up. Will we get back together? So, let's start off. What's your name? Okay, well, uh, it looks like that the relationship, uh, did you guys meet at work maybe? No, okay, well, looks like maybe the relationship was a lot of work at first. Uh, was it kind of weird? And uncomfortable at first? Yeah, it was. Okay, well, we got some work here, so. I see a work movie scene. All right, well, but you, do you, oh, oh, y'all fell in love. Y'all fell in love pretty, pretty hardcore, didn't you? Yeah, okay, well, you fell in love, and that was good, because, you know, it started off kind of weird over here with this work thing, and then we have this love thing, and, and everybody's having a good time, so I think that you guys fell in love. Uh, pretty good love. I mean, it was a, uh, definitely not a relationship of convenience. You guys actually loved each other, so we got work, and we got some people that look like they're having some lovings. All right, now we got definitely got fighting. No confusing that card. So did you guys fight a lot? I mean, after the relationship kind of got started, obviously, you know, the honeymoon period's over. You guys fight a lot or, yeah, we had, well, we had, okay. So, yeah, you did fight a lot. All right, well, it looks like a, I see a trip. Maybe a trip or maybe you guys were on this, like, road of depression together or something. I mean, at some point, the relationship become just a hassle where you're just kind of dredging the bottom of the pool and uh, one person was kind of carrying the other person kind of thing. Well, no, okay, well, you actually took a trip. Okay, well, where did you go? Uh, oh, you went to Paris. Oh, that's awesome. I've been to Paris. That's really cool. I uh, always wanted to go back to Paris. I love Paris. Okay, so you guys had a, you know, you had a trip together. So let's pull some more cards and uh, see a little more about the relationship and answer your question about will you guys uh, get back together. So we're going to pull a little more Harry Met Sally over here. Now these are a bunch of depressing cards. So again with the movie spread squinting. So if you were to squint right now watching this video, obviously you'd go, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that didn't look too bad, but... And then it kind of doesn't look too good. So it's kind of mixture here, all right? So let's remember that going in, that the movie right here, these four scenes of the movie look uh, kind of bad, kind of bad, just from squinting alone, just from color. Kind of bad, kind of bad, good. Uh, it looked good until you opened your eyes, and then you saw this dude look kind of depressed. So that, you know, that doesn't look good. So we have two, I don't know, we have three bad and one good. So my first question is going to be, uh, when you guys broke up, you really felt alone. I mean, I think it really hurt you guys, uh, at least you, you know, when you broke up and it was kind of a bad thing. So, uh, you know, how did you feel when you guys broke up? Was it more or less the hermit or things like that? Well, okay, so 
you did feel bad and kind of thing, but uh, it looks like a bunch of friends came in. Did a bunch of friends come in to support you? Or uh, did you make some new friends during this process? Well, okay, so they tell you all about that. And then you're going to say, well, you know, it looks like um, you lost a little sleep over this relationship. And I think maybe, you know, you want to get back with them. And so you're asking me, how the hell do you know that? Well, uh, you have sleepless and you have friends. You know when you're out with partying with friends, it makes you all social and stuff? Just common sense here. Sorry to sidetrack. And then you have a sleepless night and all this stuff, and it just kind of bothers you, and you were alone. You really feel alone. So uh, that was my question over here. I mean, when you had sleepless nights, do you... You know, think about an old relationship, and, and that was the last one, so obviously that's going to kind of really dig into the, the heart there with the whole uh, not sleeping and then having, you know, thoughts about this person and stuff like that. So you were alone, and then you have this time with some friends. Maybe friends cheers you up a little bit, but it looks like the next scene of the movie is you sleepless. So I'm going to think that maybe it's about this relationship or maybe it's about something else. Maybe you had other problems in life. So I'd ask the person, you know, did you have some other problems in life that kind of made you lose some sleep? Or was it uh, losing sleep over this person? Or, you know, can you tell me what exactly happened? And so you're interacting with the person to ask you the question. So now we have the whole depressed thing. So this is looks... You know, a movie scene, if I were to describe this to my friend in the next theater, I'd go, yeah, this is kind of this depressed dude, and some people were offering him some stuff, and it looked like he didn't want it. Because, you know, it looked like he had maybe had too much to drink, maybe he had a bunch of beers, you know, offered some of him another beer, and he's like, oh, dude, I've had enough. So he's just kind of depressed and kind of full and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, how that relates to this, I have no idea. But I'm just kind of summarizing the movie scenes and... In the readings, so then we'll go to the end of Harry Met Sally and pull the last set of cards. The last set of cards has some good news. So I know the question, so you're kind of getting a history of how everything went and how the relationship went and things like that. So um, at the end, you pretty much have to answer the girl's question of will they get back together. Now, I do see that this is weighing on your mind. So, you know, you have a lot of struggling and stuff like that, kind of struggling with it. Uh, obviously, it's weighing on her mind because she wouldn't ask you the question if it wasn't. So, um, I'm going to say that uh, just it doesn't look good for, looks like more heartbreak in your future if you do that. Uh, you do have this happy ending here, but it looks like a happy ending after he rushes back, maybe. So, um, if he does rush back, I think it'll be a good news. But if he doesn't, I think that we have some heartbreak if you rush over to him. So that's my reading for this particular spread. Again, it's movies. Somebody's burdened. Uh, you have heartbreak. He rushes back. If he rushes back, you know, I think it'll be okay because these two cars are together. But uh, right now it's burdening you. I think if you go for it, it's just going to be uh, painful and not a good thing. So anyway, that's Harry Met Sally, and that's my advice for this particular person. So again, that's just going with movie spreads, just looking at the cards and letting them tell you what they want to tell you. So let's get a little more advanced in the movie spread thing, and let's make a little longer movie with more scenes and uh, see what's going on.